Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome out to the Pizza Ranch. Exciting weekend. This past weekend of Hard Rocker Athletics. We always love coming to the Pizza Ranch. They do a great job, give us the best deal in town. So thanks for coming. I'm going to keep my head on a swivel. There could be people popping in the door. Feel free to leave uh, and get some more food. So enjoy yourself. We're going to start talking cross country. Went down to Shadron uh, this past weekend. Welcome up head coach Steve Johnson. Thanks, uh, Well, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, where do you run cross country, right? Well, normally our answer is parks, golf courses, those sorts of things. It was a little different this week down at Shatter. We got to run through turnips and radishes. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't believe me, so that's why I brought them up. That was actually the, about the last 50 meters of the course was right through a radish field. So, that was actually a first for me in cross country. Uh, we had a we had a good weekend. You know, uh, we had a week a meet just a week ago, and it's tough sometimes coming back two weeks in a row in cross country, especially on the guys' side where we're running the 8K distance. Uh, and so, what we wanted to do is we wanted to get out and make sure that. Uh, where it was a small meet, uh, it was just us shattering in central Wyoming, that we got out and we matched up really well. So I'll start with the guys because they ran first. Um, at home, Shattering took off from us right away, and so we sat, I sat down with the guys uh, about two days before the race, and they said, look guys, with this course, with just three teams in it, you're going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to either go down to Shattering for a Saturday run, or you're going to have to go down to race and left it up to them to make their, make up their minds. But basically I pointed, pointed out that there's something called no man's land in cross country, which is when you get caught out by yourself and there's nobody within about 50 meters on either side of you. That's a bad place to be because when you get in that situation, it's tough to keep your motivation, it's tough to keep going. And once you start slowing down in cross country, you just keep slowing down. Well, our guys decided they were going to race. So we actually placed two guys in, inside of Shattered's top seven, which would, was one better than we did last time. We had our uh, third was right behind their seventh. Uh, for comparison, at home, we were an average of about 15 seconds behind the next runner in front of us. Down there at Shattered this week, we were about nine. What that meant at the end, even though we still lost point-wise, was number one, we scored better. And number two, our team time, so the total time it took for our one through five, if we add up all of their times, improved by two and a half minutes, which is about 30 seconds a person, which is five seconds a mile. That's a huge improvement for just a reach. So that was, that was, that got us off to a good start. Now the women were a little bit nervous about the race. They were confident they could beat Shatteron, but they were nervous because it was a new course. Shatteron hadn't run an 8K or a 5K at their home, home site before, so we were getting to try out a new place. But the problem with where Shatteron's course is located, it's on the, they start on their practice field right behind the uh, Chicoin Center, and then from there, basically your only option is to go up the hill under the sea and and, uh, and keep climbing up. So they were a little bit nervous about that, but they knew that we'd done a lot of hill work, so they, they said, all right, we can handle it. And they did. Uh, we had Addie hold back through the first half. At, ho at home, we challenged her to go out and take the lead from the start and to, to create separation early. This time, we had her hold back with the group. And what we did was we put a focus on being around Shadow's number one runner. And so through the first half of the race, we were right there with Shadron's number one runner. And I told Addie at the halfway point, that was when she needed to go. She won the race by 56 seconds, oh. leaving at the halfway. For comparison, to against Shadron's number one runner, she was only 48 seconds ahead of her at home the week before. The more important piece that I challenged Addie to do was to take her teammates with her. 
And so what I asked her to do was when, when she got to that point, she was ready to go, was just to look over her shoulders and, and give a quick holler at him and tell him to get up there with her. And it worked. When we raced Shatter in the last time, if we'd taken it as a dual score, we would have beaten him 27 to 33. Uh, when what, what got us in trouble against them there, even though we still beat them, was that they put seven runners before in before our fifth. This time, we had four runners in before their second, and we had five runners in before their fifth. We had seven before their seventh. So we beat them in every facet that we could, which took the score down to 22 to 33. So an 11 point swing in the course of a week. So we really had a, a good showing this week. Pack times improved on both sides. Uh, the women went from a 206 to a 144. The guys were at about a two and a half minute pack time. Uh, the, and every single one of our guys was at least, at least nine seconds faster than they were a week ago on an 8K course that was hillier, so more challenging. And several of them improved including our, our front runner on the men's side this, this week, Jacob Huber, who's a sophomore. Jacob was 62 seconds faster than he was a week ago. <coughs> so, it's a pretty good day for us. Uh, we, were, we were pretty happy with what we got done. And then, uh, and this sets us up well. We're going to go to Billings here in two weeks, so we get this week off. Um, and in two weeks, we get a chance to see on the women's side, we get to see the preseason number 17 team in the nation in Cal Baptist. And on the men's side, we're going to get to see a team that's uh, receiving votes right now in the national rankings in San Francisco State. So we're pretty excited to see that. And for our men's team and our women's team, it's the first chance of the season to try out the, uh, the region meet distances of 10K and 6K, respectively. Questions? But just to compliment you on, I don't know much about cross country, but the strategy that you're explaining is very impressive. So thank you. Keep it going. Thank you. Ashton run last weekend. Ashton did not run. We're still still working. We're bringing him back, kind of easing him into things, and so we're looking forward to hopefully having him go on here pretty soon. Other questions? All right. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. It's always scary when Coach Dennison brings a garbage bag. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Uh, Hard Rocker Soccer was up in Billings, and I'm telling you, I heard today, I'm from Montana, so it's been snowing up there. And I don't think it was quite snowing when you were up there, but uh, it, was, it was cool enough, that's for sure. Uh, they played MSUB, played Mary. We'll come up hit Coach Jordan Cadillac. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely didn't get any snow while we were up there, but it was a little chilly. So. Uh, played Mary on Friday again. Um, executed our game plan almost flawlessly. Um, still developing our new style of play, so but we're getting there. I mean, we put up uh, 20 shots there, 11, ended up losing the game 2-1 to one in double overtime. But uh, we were up 1-0 until the 87th minute. So the guy, much, those of you that know much, much about soccer, we played 90 minutes, two 45, five minute halves. So to be up in the 87th minute and to give up a free kick, <coughs> scored on, and then with soccer, if you're tied at half, you go into to goal and goal overtime, which means that if you score in overtime, the game's over. So it's two 10-minute halves there, um, and they scored with three minutes left in the second overtime. So um, I was talking to some of the fellow coaches, and we just need to learn how to win. I mean, we haven't been successful in the past and when you're when you when you outplay a team twice in, in a week and don't come out the result it's disappointing but the problems we're having this year are a lot different than last year I mean the, at the halftime last year it was kind of what are we doing and this year we're just adjusting little things so we're competing which is great but now we just need to learn how to win how to put teams away when we have the opportunity to do so and I think once we get one I wouldn't be surprised to see us go on a bit of a roll once we start start winning the game and, start seeing some success so Sunday again we we had a we, we, we scouted um, Billings on Friday uh, they played right after us very good team 
So we kind of had a game plan to go in where we sit back and play low pressure. Some call it park the bus, where you just put all 11 players behind the ball and try to keep the field as compact as possible. Um, flawless in the first 45 minutes, the first half. So we were at 0 0 at halftime. <clears throat> and again, uh, five minutes into the first half, we make one little mistake, and you got to give credit to the Billings and capitalize on that. So um, then, literally five seconds after the kickoff, at the first goal, our Andreas Scow gets a second yellow and gets a red card. So in soccer, once you, get a red, once you get a red card, you play with a man down the rest of the game. And once you're one down 1-0, one playing a man down, it's pretty difficult to come back from that. So um, credit to our guys, though, we still created a, little, a bunch of chances. Uh, they ended up scoring two goals on set pieces, which is disappointing, but uh, Billings is a very good team. They're going to have a lot of success this year. So. Uh, this weekend we play Fort Lewis and Adam State in our RMAC openers. <coughs> we don't know, really know much about them. Adam State and Fort Lewis both have new coaches, so today and tomorrow we'll be watching some of their film and, and trying to see what we can do against them. So um, long trips going to Durango and Alamosa, so it'll be, uh, be a long weekend. We get back on the road on uh, Thursday morning and get back hopefully early Monday morning. So. So yeah, it's gonna be a long weekend. Any questions? What's your guy do to get a red card? Um, that's a great question. <laughs> his first one, his first yellow card was warranted. Um, tackled the guy. It wasn't that malicious, but he deserved it. Second one, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of Kurt flopping, but yeah. the guy flopped and. Uh, it's where you act like you got hit, but you didn't. <laughs> and you hate to see it in college soccer. It's not great for the game. It happens though, and uh, you got a second yell. So, Larson. So, not complaining about the fishing here, but you guys play in the biggest field in college athletics, I think, and you have. Two line judges and one official on the field. We, we got three refs for 94 by 45 feet. I've always wanted, why do you have one guy running around out there? Can't you get a couple more extra guys so there's no flopping? <laughs> At the higher levels, there's still one ref in the middle, but they have a fourth official on the side, which is responsible for substitutions only. And they're even starting to add two on the end line. So they're, those two on the end lines are starting to watch what's going on in the box and uh, goal line, been on goal line. They're starting to try to use goal line technology in soccer, but for now they're watching whether the ball goes over. However, the center ref is expected to run as much as a center mid, which is close to six to eight miles a game. So those guys are fit. I mean, you'll see at the highest level, those guys at the end of the game, the refs are just as tired as the field players. So they got to be pretty fit to, to ref. And unfortunately, at the in the United States, at the college level, we don't have. The most fit are the best refs. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Is there a penalty for flopping? It can be. Okay. Uh, if they catch it, it should be a, a yellow. So, but um, the ref in this weekend was uh, shocking to say the least. So. Both games were pretty bad. We got chipping. All right. Thank you. Coach Larson, soccer could use a couple extra refs maybe, but there's a lot of refs in football, and I think the coaches would say, even all those guys don't quite get it right sometimes. Speaking of football, how about the Hard Rocker football program? 2-0 to start the season. Historic RMAC win, first game in the RMAC, and they win it on the road at Dixie State. You can tell I didn't bring a coat because I was used to the 100 degree weather down there on Saturday. It's a little cooler up here. It was a hot one to start, and uh, Coach Tinker and the guys did a great job. So welcome up, Coach Zach Tinker. <laughs> Officiating was flawless at Dixie State on Saturday night. I'd like to thank the R man for doing an outstanding job. Those men are diligent uh, and do their work at a professional level. Uh, I do have a few guests with us today. Our, our running backs coach is a local guy, Brandon Gorsuch. Brandon, raise your hand. There you go. Uh, Brandon just joined us. Graduate of, uh, graduate of Shadron State. That was up at Northern State most recently. Um, very good connections to the, to the region. He's doing an awesome job with our running backs. If you watch our running backs, 
you don't you don't have to be a great coach to coach our running backs. <laughs> we have to, now you're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. But our running backs are great players. So uh, he's he's kind of lucky on on that front for sure. Our offensive line coach is here, Ethan Hudson. And, yeah, up. Ethan, Ethan's a graduate of Ole Miss, Hotty Toddy. Um, hey, he, he came to us from Rocky Mountain College. I, I had a little familiarity with him. I was involved in a, a situation out there and got to meet him through that. And, uh, and we brought him uh, back to Rapid City. He's mentoring our offensive line, and, and we've had two consecutive 200 yard rushing games, so that's always a good thing, okay? Uh, our defensive line coach and, and special teams coordinator is Eric Raisbeck. Eric's done an outstanding job with that defensive line. I think our defensive line is playing very, very hard, uh, very disruptive. And our special teams units were really the exact the, the key. That was the difference why we won the football game. If you looked at the competition on Saturday night, it was the fact that our special teams really dominated that phase of the game, and that's how we won that football game on Saturday night. His contribution was specific there. And our defensive backs coach is Travis Dixon. Graduate of, graduate of University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Okay. And I'm not going to say anything about the education at UNLV. It's outstanding. <laughs> Travis was with us last year as the running backs coach. And, uh, you know, he's got to be a little jealous of, of Brandon because last year we didn't have Kevin Thompson, we didn't have Dory Cord, and we didn't have Connor Silvera. And those are all three great players. So he did a great job with what he had a year ago uh, and got those guys ready to play. Now he's working with our defensive backs. Okay, so when you see Coach Dixon, he's on the defensive side of the ball doing a great job with those guys. I uh, thank those guys for coming. I offered them that I'd buy them lunch, and so they showed up. <laughs> it's really simple, guys. It's really simple. Okay. Um, excited about our first win in the RMAC. I mean, it was the first opportunity to go. It was a fun road trip. It was a great experience. No complications whatsoever. Got there. Um, it was a bit of a long trip, but our kids got there. You know, one of the things with our kids is that we don't uh, tolerate distractions. Our, our senior leadership is very, very strong in our program and the players take ownership of their role, and our seniors run the program. And so for me, I sit back and, and ask the seniors what they need, and they tell me what they need, and then we just go out and do it. Uh, so kids made zero excuses. Uh, frankly speaking, we didn't tell them, but we had a thermometer, it was 120 degrees on the field to kick off. Oh my gosh. And that's hot, and there was no shape. Um, and that's not something we're used to. And we, we weren't really trained for that um, this summer. It hasn't really been that hot. And so I give all the credit in the world to Coach McGez, our strength coach. He has done such a great job with the conditioning of our football program. Um, our kids were fit and ready. I was way more nervous about the conditions than they were. That's part of the reason we were so bad offensively in the first half was I was being extremely conservative because uh, I was nervous about the heat and how it was going to affect us. And that was a mistake I made. And our kids responded. They overcame their coaching from their, their head coach in the first half. Uh, our defense was unbelievable in the first half, showed character and toughness and integrity. And then our offense uh, woke up at halftime, no panic. One of the things that's different about this team now, when you're playing that poorly offensively in the first half, and it, usually there's going to be some, some snippiness between the units. Uh, we, that, there was zero of that on Saturday. It was all encouragement. It was all positivity. It was all get to the next play and try to make the adjustments. And in the second half, I thought the entire football program played a great second half of football. Uh, we, we tried to, we made some mistakes at the end of the game where we're still a team that's learning how to win games still, right? Still trying to learn how to win them and not give them away just like Jordan's team is. But um, we were able to find a way to get the W, and that's all that really mattered. We got out of there, and I thought the character of our team was on display on Saturday night. Uh, I don't know that we were all that much better than they were, but I know the character of our men showed, uh, and you can be very, very proud of your football team that, that, that went to St. George, Utah, and represented the Hard Rockers on Saturday. Um, this week, we're getting ready to play Colorado State Pueblo. Okay? Um, uh, they are the 2014 national champions. Their record in the last uh, since 2010 is 68-8. Uh, they've won five consecutive Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference championships. Uh, they're a good football program. They have really good players. Uh, they haven't played their best football yet. Uh, and uh, we're, we asked them to go ahead and wait another week until they do. Okay? Uh, but, uh, you know, our kids are very uh, enthusiastic about this opportunity. 
Um, I'm glad it was the second part of the back-to-back -back road trips. It's always tough to do two road trips in a row. We got back at 3 in the afternoon on Sunday. We were back on uh, on the field this morning at, at 5.50 in the morning. So, um, you know, our kids are a little fatigued that way. Um, but I'm glad it's the second game of the back-to-back -back because there's not a lot of motivational speeches required to get the kids ready for the greatest challenge. The program, this program in my time here, has never played an opponent with the pedigree and the resume that this opponent has. So for our kids, it's an opportunity to go up and play a big time opponent. They are 0-2. Um, it's a little deceptive. I mean, if you were a college football team at the Division I level, basically they've lost to Florida State and Notre Dame in their first two games, okay? So, I mean, it's, uh, they've lost two games, but they're against two top, uh, top 15 programs nationally and a top five program nationally. So um, that's pretty deceptive in terms of records. They're a very talented football team, and our kids are ready to go to battle on Saturday. The, the practice this morning had good energy. The practice tomorrow is going to be one of the, the epic workday Wednesdays in the history of hard rocker football. The kids are excited. They can't wait for the alarm to go off tomorrow at 447. <laughs> and that's what we're excited to do. Okay. Any questions anybody has? Larry, I know you're going to have some questions. Come on. Tom, has a question. How many penalty yards did Dixie State end up with? More than us. <laughs> um, I didn't calculate them all. It was a you know you talked about the game being a little chippy. The, ga the game had some um, the, the game had some some elements of that to it. I thought our kids uh, showed integrity throughout the game. You know, uh, showed a bunch of character um, and didn't let that stuff get to them. There were some plays that were um, plays that certainly things we don't teach. You know that that occurred during the game. And uh, our kids just overcame it. No excuses. Nobody pointed any fingers. Uh, nobody cried about it. Uh, I didn't have to give out any hugs, you know, to see if everybody was okay. We just kept playing football, and that's kind of what we do. We just play football. And, and uh, I was really proud of, 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 of the men that we put on the field on Saturday. Zach, I do have a question. Good. Can you comment, can you comment about the ejection? It looked kind of a, like a bad call from what I saw. In the there was an ejection, yes. Uh, uh, one of our players, uh, Witterson Brutus, was ejected for what they called a targeting penalty. So all, all penalties that are, there's a lot of clear throats in the room here. Uh, there, any, anything that's a uh, targeting penalty is reviewed by the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. So uh, we sent that uh, video and, and uh, some other supporting video evidence from the game uh, to the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference, and we anxiously await their response. He is suspended currently for the first half of next week's game. That could be reversed. It's it's under review, and if they reverse it, then he's reinstated immediately. But of course, he can't get back the two quarters of football that he missed on last Saturday night. But um, that is how it works. <clears throat> What's your take on the call? I think it's a it's a bang bang play, and and um, it's it's hard to when I'm out there, it's it's hard to tell, you know. Um, there were a lot of bang bang plays during the game. I think that's a really difficult rule. Um, I think the guys are out there doing the very best they can. I believe that the video uh, supports us when it's all said and done. And I hope they see it the same way. Yeah. And Good. what do you got to do to beat Pueblo? Well, we got to do the. We got to start faster. We really do. We 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 were a little sluggish coming out the gate. We gave up a score on the first possession. We didn't score on our first possession. That's not the best way to start. Um, they're going to be. Playing a new quarterback, from what I understand, um, they've made a change there. Um, they might be a, they, you know, they haven't played their best football, especially offensively. They just haven't been as sharp as they as they've been in years past. Um, that bodes well, you know. You want them to kind of keep stay out of rhythm a little bit. Um, and we gotta, we can't turn the football over. We gotta try to get it from them a couple times. And we can't turn it over. The one thing about it is, it, it's a game where they have some explosive players. So we could do everything right on one play. And it still go wrong. That makes sense. Um, that's going to happen, and we just can't let that bother us. And the one thing with our team is we we've had a good resolve. We've made some some bad things happen for ourselves in the first two games, and we've responded every single time. So I want to see what happens now if an opponent makes a big play, maybe a little series of plays, how we respond to it. I think that's going to be what's going to be critical. But our kids are ready to battle. They're excited. Yeah. Were they a top twenty? What's that now? Were they a top 20 team preseason? Yeah, preseason I think they were fourth or something in the nation. I mean, this is a talented football team. Yeah. Yeah, they're not ranked right now, I don't believe. I don't believe. So. Three from the RMAC. Yeah, you got you still have Colorado Mines, which is there in the top five, and then uh, uh, Colorado Mesa uh, as well. Um, 
are in the are in the top top twenty five right now. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I don't know. Rocco. Thanks, Coach. Nice job. That was a big deal. Big deal down there. It's a fun game to watch in St. George. It's really easy to answer questions when you're two and up. Nobody has tough questions for them. That's good. Doug Tabbert just got done with the walkthrough. Hard Rocker Volleyball kicks off their home opener tonight against Dickinson State. Welcome up, Coach Doug Tabbert. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Uh, congratulations to football and, and get off to a great start. And, uh, uh, our kids were following over the weekend and, and keeping track of sports and all that. So uh, we were in a Dickinson staff. Actually, and I want to know sometimes what it's like to have seniors. So sometimes it's kind of, you know, it's, you know, right. it must be. So um, we were in, in uh, uh, Sioux Falls this past weekend at the uh, Sioux Falls tournament. Um, didn't go quite as well as we'd hoped. Uh, but we're still in the process of trying to grow and develop and learn some things. And it's, it's just a process for us. And uh, we're, we're making some strides here. Uh, start off with William Jewell, um, uh, and we're kind of in the match, and it's kind of those matches we were going, but it was close, and we were never really out of it, but never really got, quite got control of it, and you're, you're kind of sitting there going, okay, why are they beating us? Because physically, they're not really much different than us, other than they're a little older, and um, and then you go see something and go, oh, that's why, because we just shanked the pass that was sort of right at us, or we just let a serve drop, people because if I was going out, that kind of thing, and we just didn't do quite enough to uh, to get rolling. And I think we're finding out some of our freshmen that we're counting on, um, they're kind of slow starters, and uh, we got to help them get through that, and I think the best way to do that is to sub a faster starter in for them, but we don't have that option right now, so we just, that's part of what we have to, to learn to get through. Uh, so it was, it was relatively close, but we just didn't quite play well enough to get that done. Uh, played Minnesota Crookston that afternoon. Um, Got a little more veteran team. Uh, the biggest thing coming into the season that worried me was what our ball control would be because, uh, like I talked about in our preseason uh, opener thing, um, we had three veteran ball control players last year that, that basically gave us all of our ball control. Uh, a senior, a junior, and a sophomore that played a lot. And uh, it's all coming from freshmen right now. So uh, that was the big concern is how would we ball control? Would we have any consistency in that element? And that kind of broke down with us against Brookston. Uh, they had some kids, um, some veteran players, just ripping serves at us. And I honestly think some of our freshmen, they've probably never seen serves quite like that. Uh, and it was just coming over and over and over again. And, and that was a kind of a baptism by fire for three or four of our freshmen. Uh, we didn't handle that real well. And uh, uh, we, we just couldn't get any momentum to go on any kind of runs. As soon as we get a little something going on our side, uh, they'd side out and they might score two or three points mainly off the serve and, and uh, that's hard to overcome. So, um, kind of got through the day anyway. Uh, next day, played Bemidji State. Um, kind of a bigger, more physical team that doesn't have as much ball control. They got one kid about a 6-2 uh, outside that really, I mean, looks like she ought to be at you know, Michigan State or something, but um, <laughs> not quite the athlete, but she's a you know, big, tall kid. So, we got to a great start. Played just the way we want to play. Um, Taking big swings offensively, uh, we gave them fits with our serving game. Uh, defended well. I mean, we we're just that's the way we want to play the game, and I think we were 25-19 and, and feeling pretty good. And then they kind of flipped it on us in the second set. Uh, they upped their serving game quite a bit and uh, gave us some more trouble with that. Uh, we thought we were serving tough still, but they passed us a lot better in the second set. And uh, once they were in system more, they they could play a little more physical than we could. Uh, and it really turned on us pretty quickly. Uh, but it went all after the second set, you felt, okay, we're still in this. And uh, we just couldn't quite get momentum back of the next two sets. Um, they weren't uh, big margins or anything, but uh, uh, the change between one and two, we didn't handle real well in terms of coping with the adversity there. So, uh, and then the fourth uh, match was against Sioux Falls, and they're pretty good. <laughs> they're better than they're gonna be. Um, they got two outside hitters that really bring it, and they got a middle that just crushes the ball. And when you hit a ball so hard that it bounces off the floor and up into a kid's jaw and gives her a concussion, you got a pretty good arm. And that happened to us. So um, we're on concussion number two already this, this fall. Uh, our freshman libero, um, Allie Brown, went to dig a ball, that, uh, and she got pretty low to dig it. And uh, this, this beast from, from Sioux Falls hit it. So it bounces and short hops her in the jaw. And, uh, 
then looked quite right after that, and then uh, she eventually got diagnosed with a concussion. So um, they were a little bit more for us to handle. They had three veteran uh, uh, hitters, senior outside. It's pretty good. Just, uh, that's that's a, a, a pretty experienced team that physically posed some challenges that were hard for us to deal with. So uh, it was, uh, from that matter, kind of a tough weekend in terms of a result standpoint. Uh, we are seeing progress. We probably played our best volleyball in stretches against Sioux Falls, which is good. Um, we just we're having a hard time getting momentum and keeping the good stuff going for long periods of time. And uh, if your serve receive isn't consistent, it's hard to do. It's hard to play uh, extended uh, lengths of time well if you're out of system a lot. And um, like I said we've got uh, almost all of our serve receives coming from four freshmen right now. So uh, we just got to grow through that. And uh, we're, we're doing some good things, and, and, and we're seeing growth. Um, uh, one of our freshmen, uh, he was playing outside, he, he didn't even play the position until this past spring with their club team, uh, is really coming along. Um, and then I say that, and she had the worst walkthrough in the history of walkthroughs this morning, so um, you know, I don't know what we're going to get for her tonight, but uh, we're, we're making steps, uh, we just got to grow, and um, I, I told her, I wish I could flip the switch and make us grow faster, but you can't, it's just experience, and, and um, you know, we'll, we'll, we just got to work through it. So. Uh, I think our attitudes have stayed, have stayed good. Um, I, I think we see the light kind of in the tunnel kind of thing, but we just got to get better, and that's going to come with time and experience and, and a little growth, and, and that's kind of what we're plugging away for. Uh, Health-wise, uh, uh, Emily Newton, who's been our kind of our, our most stalwart player, junior middle hitter out of Colorado, um, has had some lower leg problems over the past year and a half or so. They kind of flare up, and, and uh, so we, we took her, we, we didn't practice her yesterday, I'm hoping that she'll be a little bit more um, uh, ready to go tonight. And again, Ali Brown, our, our libero, um, is out for probably through the weekend uh, with the concussion. Uh, so um, it's the next freshman in line that'll play libero tonight, I think. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, Mackenzie Maiden, who's a freshman out of Rapid City, uh, Stevens High School, uh, will probably play libero first tonight, probably through the weekend. Um, Going to try a few different things lineup-wise tonight, kind of see if we can get a little thing going. but. Um, uh, we're not in a bad place. We just we just got to keep working through the the, and the challenges, and, and um, we're closer all the time. We think, uh, and we just got to get over the hump. Um, Dickinson State don't know a ton about them. Uh, the record is poor, uh, which is encouraging. Um, they're uh, they've been struggling, and um, uh, their schedule that they played has not been a great schedule. They, they haven't played a who's who of of NAIA or Division II volleyball, so we're hoping that that, that bodes well for us. But uh, um, last year they were making progress. They were a pretty young team last year. Uh, they were much better the second time we played them the first. Uh, and we just kind of got to see what we get. It's one of those matches you go in, you feel like you take care of what's on your half of the net, and you and you play well, you can dictate the outcome. Uh, so hopefully that will be the case. Uh, this weekend, Fort Lewis, um, they're a one-win team right now. They're struggling too. Uh, so we have them on Friday night, and then Adams State on Saturday. Uh, Adams State's a little more hard to predict. Uh, they can play very high, and they can play very low. Um, and uh, we still have to scout them out on, on the video that we've got, so we'll get to that later this week. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a, 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 there's opportunities this week for us, we think. Uh, there's opportunity tonight. Uh, I think our, team, our, our kids will be up and ready to play tonight. First match at home is always fun. And, and we're expecting a pretty good crowd. Kind of the, um, uh, uh, the word on campus, there's going to be a lot of people there tonight. We hope so. 50 free t-shirts for the first 50 students. So that's none of you, but um, come anyway. Um, uh, so it, it's good to play at home. And, and, and so it's a chance for us to get some wins this week if, if we take care of business. So uh, hopefully we'll do that and uh, stay healthy through the rest of the weekend. So uh, any questions? Do you see some? And the girl. You can really can see somebody who really wants to win. Do you have a good leader like that? Yeah, I, I mean, we do. Um, uh, Emily Newton is, is pretty competitive. and She's our junior, most experienced kid we have. But she's not a real vocal leader. Um, but she's kind of a lead by example. Um, you know, she competes pretty well, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of the vocal stuff is coming from our sophomores. And that's a tough place for them because you know, they're only soft and they've only been around a little over a year. So um, I'm not sure we have that real raw, raw person yet. 
they're kind of emerging. Um, uh, Emily's much more lead by example kind of thing. But we got some competitive kids. It's just for a lot of them, the world's kind of spinning right now because they're seeing stuff they haven't seen before. Uh, we, you're used to, last year they're playing against the other 18 year olds. Now they're playing against 21, 22 year olds that are are pretty experienced and uh, they're seeing stuff they haven't seen before. So. I mean, we're, we're hanging in pretty well, I think, in terms of emotion and attitude and all that. Um, it's just it's a process, like I said. Yeah, hang with us. You know, come watch us play. You'll see some stuff you like. We just got to stretch it. We got to make that stuff last a little bit longer, and, and uh, uh, the downtimes last a little bit longer, shorter. But uh, we're getting there. So we appreciate all the support and, and, and the feedback. And uh, you know, come tonight if you can. And, and hopefully we'll give you a reason to come back again. So thank you. Coach just said it, volleyball tonight, Friday, Saturday at home, three matches. Hard Rocker football on the road at CSU Pueblo, Hard Rocker soccer on the road, the RMAC as well, cross country taking a week off. So we'll be back next week at Buffalo Wild Wings in the lead up to the Black Hills State, Black Hills Brawl football game that we're all getting excited for. Thanks to Pete Rance. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thanks to the coaches. <laughs>